Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thank you for coming on today. Good afternoon. Well, overnight on Wall Street, we saw the Dow Jones with a solid gain after U.S. jobless claims uh, came in better than expected. Tech stocks were off, though, so the S&P was a little more subdued and the Nasdaq was flat. Uh, Mr. you take us through the, uh, the, the global markets. Yes, if you look at the overall market, it continues to show quite reasonable rising trend despite the concern about the inflation and pressure. Uh, overall, U.S. market did quite okay. Um, and in general, the overall major indices are all going up quite nicely. Um, however, though, NASDAQ was slightly down, uh, but actually pretty much flat. Uh, and Dow Jones, which is the more of uh, the value stocks or uh, inside of the Dow's, and, and it actually did quite well out of the old indexes. And also, if you look at small caps, it actually gained by 1%. Uh, I think that this is because most investors are pretty much cheering up the uh, strong labor market data that came out. Uh, American filing new claims for unemployment benefits dropped by 38,000 to 406,000 uh, 406,000 uh, last week. Uh, this is the lowest level since the pandemic first hit the labor market in March 2020. Of course, still it's a far away from the uh, four weeks average of about 21,000 uh, level, uh, but nevertheless, it seems to show continuous improvement. Uh, because of this kind of news, we did see the 10-year government bond rate to rise to 1.6% uh, plus. Um, clearly, the uh, inflation numbers are the most important thing at the current point in time, and um, investors are watching quite closely of April PCE numbers, uh, which seems to show that uh, inflation measures are jumping up to about 2.9% in April. Uh, that also uh, reflected in the most of the commodity prices, and the oil prices were hitting well above $67 per barrel. Um, we think that um, the growth stock and the uh, value stock were both do quite reasonably well in the future as economy uh, continues to show recovery. And here in Korea, there was a nice gain today in the markets. The cost be rising almost to 3,200 in the session, but not quite. Uh, the Kosdaq at almost 980. Investors feeling good about the direction the economy is going. Uh, tell us about the Korean market. Yes, a cost be was up by 0.73 percent, and it hit 3,188 territories. Um, in the past two days, it was kind of uh, mediocre performance. I really didn't do much, but it did recover nicely on the third day. Um, and cost that was up by, by about 0.35 percent. Uh, main reason for these kind of rises were because foreign investors as well as institutional investors were coming back to the market. Uh, we did see uh, 13 days highest level of net buying by the foreign investors. Uh, foreign investors net bought about uh, 139.5 billion, uh, which is highest level since 10th of this month. Um, in terms of actual short selling amount, it did decline uh, reasonably. Uh, that is resulted into Korean one dollar rate to stabilize, and uh, Korean one dollar rate is at. 11.15.5, uh, which is actually appreciating of Korean won. That means that uh, foreign investors' interest is still there, um, and this is actually a reasonably good positive indication. Um, however, we did see interest rate being fairly reasonably high for Korea. Uh, it did hit 2.12% for 10-year bond rate, uh, which is uh, well above 1.61% of U.S., uh, and Bank of Korea have mentioned that they might raise interest rate in case the economy does recover very strongly as we are seeing right now. Uh, clearly, indication is, is that the net export numbers are very strong. That is resulting into very positive uh, economic growth rate. Uh, and that has resulted into somewhat of an overheating in a sense. And therefore, uh, Bank of Korea is considering possible rate hike within this year. However, though, because the economic recovery is very strong and the earnings growth rates are very strong, uh, interest rate uh, rise is not necessarily 
that negative given the fact that uh, earnings scores are very strong. Yeah, let's uh, stay on that subject for a minute. You mentioned the Korean government 10-year uh, bond at uh, 2.1 and the 10-year Treasury in the U.S. Uh, it was below 1.6, but now, you, now it's uh, above that level. And, of course, that's a considerable rise, if you remember, before when we started the, the year at uh, below 1%. So uh, investors all around the world are, are wondering uh, what would happen if the Fed were to actually start uh, raising rates. What do you think uh, would happen if, uh, if rates go up uh, in the markets? Right. Always the interest rate rise is negative news for the equity market. However, um, if you look at in general, we don't think that the Fed is going to touch the interest rate until 2023, despite that inflation pressure is there. I think the first step would be uh, tapering, uh, which means that the net purchase of the bonds buying program would be reduced uh, in the future. Um, however, we think that the government will allow the inflations to rise because that results into the government debt level as a percent of GDP to decline. Uh, we need a reasonable inflation number rather than not seeing an inflation or deflation. Uh, that is very important. Um, of course, the long-term interest rate is most likely to gradually rise, as we expect, uh, as the government continues to put efforts um, to improve the global economy. And we do expect the U.S. interest rate of 10-year bond rate to go up to as high as 2% to 2.5% over the next uh, couple of years uh, as the economy recovers. However, though, that is not necessarily a very high number uh, relative to the return on equity that has been generated for the U.S. companies. Uh, also, that also filled into the Korea. Uh, Korea's interest rate will be always higher than U.S. Uh, because clearly Korea is not the uh, base currency, and you need to have interest rate higher than U.S. in order to see uh, foreign net purchase of Korean uh, assets rather than selling it, uh, including the government bonds. Uh, we do think that the uh, Korea's interest rate is probably more keen to rise uh, higher because we are seeing much stronger growth of uh, export and stronger growth of GDP than U.S. for the time being. Uh, however, though, there is a possible pressure uh, because of the high-level consumer debt. But in any case, overall, uh, interest rate is uh, going to be gradually going up rather than a uh, 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 fast pace of growing, uh, rising. Uh, if that's the case, then we don't think that it's going to be net much, that much negative for the equity market performance over the next couple of years. Got it. All right, uh, Mr. Yu, we'll have to leave it there for today. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, and have a great weekend. Thank you very much. You too.